Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I welcome you all uh, for the Friday webinar for an insightful session. I am Uma Mayeshwaran. Uh, I'm heading the Channel Partners Division at PMS Bazaar. Uh, the topic for today's session is angel investing, an opportunity to invest and how to build a profitable portfolio of startups. Uh, to, to highlight the importance of the session is that we uh, as an investor are used to a regular investing of into equity shares and into various uh, you know asset classes of equity but uh, somewhere angel investing all this alternate space investment is still not been very conversant uh, among the uh, fellow investors so this attempt from pms bazaar is basically to bring to light to you all about the opportunities that are there in the angel uh, fund investing and uh, for that today we have brought the expert onto our table uh, <clears throat> to give a deeper understanding on the topic today we have mr abhay agarwal founder and fund manager piper sarika angel fund with us to take us through the investment opportunities in the angel fund investing piper sarika angel fund comes under the category 1 of uh, sebi regulations for aif And the, and the minimum investment amount is rupees twenty five lakhs. Uh, just to give a brief uh, uh, update about profile about um, Abhay Agarwal, uh, who is the founder manager, founder and fund manager Piper Sarika. Uh, Abhay is the founder and uh, fund manager of Piper Sarika Advisors with with more than twenty five years of uh, experience. Uh, before starting Piper Sarika, Abhay has worked as a director with the private equity group of J P Morgan in India. Hong Kong and Singapore. This is was between 1997 and 2003. Uh, Abhay himself has invested uh, in companies in India, Korea, Australia, Singapore, China, and the United States. Uh, he himself is a successful investor and has made multiple angel investments over a period of time with the timely exits. uh have i besides all this you know career uh, you know schedule uh, he is a second degree black belt in judo and a certified international judo coach he trains the under privileged children and supports the budding judo class so with that uh, background i will hand over the podium to mr abhay over to you abhay yeah thank you so much uma for that introduction and uh... thank you for uh, all the participants uh, who have joined us today uh, and taking time out on a friday evening uh, so uh, as the topic is and uh, you know that you have already read about uh, in the communication sent by pms bazaar uh, what i will try to cover today is uh, first of all the basics of uh, angel investing through an angel fund and uh, then talk a bit about piper sericals angel fund uh, so uh, before that uh, i would just like to quickly uh, uh, you know talk about what piper serica is piper serica is a company that was founded in 2003 and right now what we do is we manage a pms that is called piper serica pms and we also manage uh, 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 a mauritius based spi fund which is called piper serica numoro india uh, india fund and the objective of these uh, pms and fund is same that to invest in high quality uh, growth companies in india uh, uh, through which our investors can benefit uh, in terms of financial returns over the next 10 15 20 years and uh, uh, while we were doing this uh, while we have been managing money in public markets there has been a grow you know uh, uh, over last year or so uh there has been a growing demand from our investors uh, the hni is ultra hni is some family offices uh, uh telling us that look we want to invest in startups because india we believe that india is going to be a country of startups and you know many more unicorns will get created but we don't really know how to go about it because uh you know there has to be some some uh some uh, sensible way of doing it rather than just giving money to founders who come to us 
and that kind of gave us the idea uh, and uh, to to launch our own startup fund for our investors uh, uh, and we have uh, the advantage that piper erica has i'll cover that in my presentation is that we have been in the startup ecosystem for more than 10 years now so we already have in, made investments in startups and uh, uh, a lot of them have done very well we have developed our own screening tool that is a pro proprietary uh, screening tool that we have that uh, improves our rate of success and we want to bring all of that into our angel fund but before that i will just share my screen and talk a little bit about what exactly is angel investing why should investors have uh, 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 some portfolio of their uh, equity pool invested in startups and and uh, what is the best way to go about it so what is angel investing now all of us are familiar with uh, public market investing and that typically happens when the company has done its ipo so let's take some example you know companies like uh, that recently listed zomato or uh, you know policy bazaar and some of these other companies that have come and listed recently uh, where all uh, uh, you know startups at some point of time not that far back just about 12 years ago and now that they have ipoed uh, public market investors retail investors can buy their shares in india but you have to remember that these companies have been in existence for a long period of time so if you look at it typically the first uh a round of funding that the company raises is what we call the friends and family round which is some founder has an idea that they want to implement but they need some capital to bring that idea to the market and that is where they typically raise money from people they already know and who trust them which is their family and friends subsequent to that comes angel investing uh, sometimes also called seed investing or startup investing and this is where slightly more professional and hni investors come in when the idea has translated into some kind of business you know there is already a product or service that can be reference checked with customers and uh, it's not only an idea on paper but it's an idea that has taken wings and and it can be demonstrated that there are customers who are willing to pay for the product or service that is designed by the startup uh, and this is uh where the angel investors come in who give the next round of capital to the company to expand its business so this is basically uh, to grow an idea that is already doing well and showing promising signs subsequent to that you know comes venture capital which is a higher round of larger round of uh, private investment then comes private equity and private equity rounds can be series a b c d and can go up to as much as 200 300 million dollars even more and once the company has grown to a size and shape that it it is it can be listed uh that is when it goes to an ipo stage and that is where investors uh, uh, uh are able to the the retail public market investors are able to buy the shares so to give you some example you know if you look at uh so there are some you know very well known startups and while their public market performance has not been very good but at the same time you have to remember that the investors who came in at the seed stage or early angel stage in these companies have made handsome returns uh while the public market investors have not been able to do the same so if you look at zomato even at its current price is giving that 730x return for investors who came in in the angel round 12 years ago and and it this includes a, a, a listed company called in info edge that you may be aware of uh, flipkart similarly 1500 times return for angel investors who exited in the sale transaction to walmart you have ola which has given an even higher return which, despite you know not still hitting the ipo you have nike 800 times return and freshworks with that recently listed on nasdaq has given a 300 times return from its first round so uh, and this is only in india we are focusing on indian companies if you go to the us and some of the other markets you will see even bigger successes even bigger uh, you know funding a lot of companies that are part of nasdaq now they are funded the same way you know through angel venture capital private equity and then ipo so uh, our our uh focus is on coming in at angel investing stage which is stage 2 and this is where uh uh the company has already uh 
demonstrated that it has customers who are willing to buy its product or service uh, profitably, and now it needs capital to grow that business. Why should an investor invest in startups? There are a couple of reasons. The most important is that in India right now there is an explosion of entrepreneurial activity, and 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 that entrepreneurial activity is going to create tremendous amount of wealth, and uh, and that is why uh, every equity investor should have allocation to private investing in their portfolio. And it is a complementary addition to equity allocation for long-term returns. You know, even if you're a public market investor, everybody looks at long-term investing, and uh, and this is where you know the startup portfolio also comes in. And this is more suitable for uh, patient investors who are looking to build a portfolio of startups uh, and and can uh, go, can can live with some illiquidity because uh, the difference between public market. And private investing in angel uh, uh, funds and angel companies is that uh, there is no liquidity like public market. So that is one disadvantage. But at the same time, the returns that you can generate more than uh, compensate for that. So ideal allocation of an HNI overall equity allocation is about 10 to 20 percent. And the reason being that though it is higher return, it comes with higher li illiquidity also. And uh, there was a survey done by Cross Invest Wealth, which is a U.S.-based fund, and which says that uh, an investor with a uh, uh, with a portfolio of U.S. dollar one million, which is about eight crores, in U.S. typically allocates about eight to fourteen percent in private uh, companies, and uh, a larger investor like a family office would invest fourteen to twenty-two percent. So this is a product that is basically for HNI investors who can allocate uh, part of their equity uh, pool to this uh, asset class uh, and live with the illiquidity. Uh, if you look at what's happening in India, the ecosystem has matured very rapidly. You know there are now tremendous opportunities to disrupt existing industries, uh, existing processes, and to create new products and services using technology. Uh, secondly, for the first time, we are seeing availability of global funds. For a long period of time, good founders were also not able to get capital. They were they were they were restricted to asking for capital from their friends or family. But now, with the abundance of venture capital, private equity, global funds like Tiger Global, uh, uh, Matrix Partners, uh, SoftBank, uh, Sequoia, being very active in India, Lighthouse Ventures. Uh, pretty much every uh, global fund is in India right now looking to invest in Indian startups. There is a lot of government support, you know, which is very heartening to note. And government has been constantly tweaking uh, uh, its laws to make it easy for startups to take wins. Uh, uh, another heartening sign is the rise of first generation entrepreneurs. And we're seeing it, you know, that a lot of our very competent students, one of the best students, you know, coming from IITs or Bits Pilani or IIM Ahmedabad or, you know, uh, IITs and IIMs would typically uh, leave the country in search of better jobs with companies like Google or Citibank or, you know, Amazon or Microsoft. But now that is not their first preference. You know, the best of the brains are now staying back, uh, creating their own teams, uh, founding teams to uh, disrupt uh, some industry. And that is a remarkable sign, and society is highly acceptable. You know, it's now a very proud feeling for somebody to say that I am a startup founder. You know, compare that to I am a coder at uh, Google. Uh, there is a rise of digital economy. I think the good thing that in India we have is uh, that we adapt to technology very fast. Uh, and then, uh, uh, most importantly, not only the founders but good quality talent. Is willing to join startups for growth and returns because people have made really uh, fortunes from their stock options. You know, the ones where the companies have worked out and employees joined early, their stock options are worth, worth millions of dollars. So startups are able to, uh, you know, uh, attract good talent now, which was not the case earlier. <clears throat> And uh, you can see this. You know, this is uh, this doesn't include this year's data, but you can see. The growth in the number of unicorns that we have created, and unicorns, as you are aware, are companies with more than one billion dollar valuation. So, starting with 2011, one 
unicorn 12 one unicorn 13 one unicorn 14 three unicorns 15 three unicorns and then look at the growth you know now we have more than 120 130 unicorns in india and these are all companies that have come up over last 6 7 8 years and created tremendous value for their investors and this is not going to stop here you know you would you would see hundreds of new more unicorns coming out of india over the next 5 6 years uh uh, uh startups uh need to also keep in mind that there is a risk return uh parameter that is different from regular public market investing and that is something that i would like to highlight uh that you can expect a higher return the longer your holding period typically gives you higher returns and that is again proven by data uh that companies that hold uh funds that are able to hold their investments for a uh, longer period create higher returns uh and typically the target return for a 10 year period on these kind of funds is 10 times so which is looking at a irr of about 30% at the same time it's not company by company because the startup space has a high mortality rate you know in some cases it's is more than 50% because a lot of companies do not uh, are not able to raise the next round of funding and close down uh, but at a portfolio basis you still have one or two outperformers uh that take care of the entire portfolio then there is lack of liquidity and like public market portfolio as i keep saying like if you are invested in mutual fund or pms or directly into stocks whenever you want money you can just sell the shares and three days later you have the cash in your bank but in this case that does not happen you have to stay invested till there is a liquidity event that gives you your capital and return back <clears throat> uh for investors what are the key success factors you know and this is something that uh, uh we have also learned from experience of more than 20 years of investing in private companies the most important thing is the quality of deal flow you know one needs to be able to see a lot of deals you can't be limited to your own small network because uh the more deals that you see the better is your probability of success uh, uh and that is why it is very important to be part of the angel investing ecosystem that includes all the other angel funds all the other angel platforms uh, uh, uh founders uh, lead investors syndicates consortiums accelerators incubators uh, each uh, engineering college in the country has its own incubator there are lot of accelerators that are working independently so you need to know all of them so that you can see all of their deals that is very important you know you can't you can't have a very small network and see very few deals uh second important thing is when you are seeing so many deals you should be able to uh, uh analyze them quickly uh, because good founders do not wait for too long and that is why having an automated predictive tool becomes very important the third thing is that Uh, if you are able to co-invest with other investors, that improves the probability of success rather than being the only investor. Because as more investors in the group, you bring more uh, experience, more uh, value to the table for founders and yourself. Uh, fourth thing is that you know if if a company is doing well, it's important to stay invested for a long period of time rather than getting exited quickly uh, to improve your returns. uh and then to cover the fact that the whole industry or the space has high uh risk high of mortality uh it is very important to have a portfolio of 30 to 50 companies you know because uh that way even if a lot of companies uh close down there are other companies that are uh, that that will create the returns for you whereas if you have a only 4 5 6 8 10 investments the probability of losing all your capital is very high so diversification over 30 to 50 investments is very critical and lastly as a uh, as an investor it's not enough to just give the money and go away you no know, as an as an investor or of angel fund manager it is very important to support the founder support the portfolio companies they have young founders they need a lot of advice lot of uh, support and you should be able to bring that support i think these are the 
factors that are very critical for the success in angel investing you know unlike unlike public market investing uh so what about piper sarita's angel fund you know how how do we make sure that uh we are reducing risk of mortality and at the same time we are choosing the best startups uh, uh you know that we can back so first of all uh, i and my team we have multi decade experience of investing in startups and lot of them have gone on to become very successful companies we will uh, share some data with you uh, further in the presentation uh, we have excellent access to deal flow because we work with almost all other angel investors fund syndicates and platforms uh, then one of the biggest advantage we have is that we have developed an automated productive tool called yoda.ai and what it does is that it takes into account 17 variables uh, and once we have entered that data it predicts the probability of success uh, for a startup so that we can focus only on companies where the probability of success is very high uh, we have back tested this this tool extensively it works very well and uh, it has uh, it make sure that we have an investment discipline rather than you know human bias coming in uh and and lastly since we are public market investors we bring quite unique insights uh from the public from large listed companies uh, uh side uh, to not only our investment process but also to our investors uh, to our uh, founders uh, so in terms of our own experience we have evaluated more than 500 deals over last 10 years uh, we have uh, 50 live investments right now uh, uh, these are not part of the fund but these are these are these are outside the fund uh, uh, we have a pretty high irr since inception from exits and current valuation of portfolio companies based on their last round valuation our mortality rate has been very low compared to the industry and one of the reasons for that is use of yoda.ai which is the tool that i mentioned uh and this what is tool does is it it brings a lot of objectivity into decision making uh compared to human bias and that is why uh we have stayed out of trouble uh, unless we score any company on yoda.ai we will not invest in it uh and doing all this because of our presence in the ecosystem we get access to very high quality deal flow these are some of our portfolio companies that you know some of you may be aware of khata book i think is a is a pretty well known we invested in this in june 2000 january 2019 at a at a valuation of 10 million dollars the company raised a last uh, round of valuation was 600 million dollars uh, and i think they will soon be raising a round at a at a billion dollar valuation so we have literally gone from 10 million dollars of valuation to a uh, billion dollars of valuation and it is a 100x return in one company uh then there's a company called fleetex uh that is uh, uh just invested in uh, by our uh another listed company called india mart picked up a 20% stake in fleetex at uh, more than 10 times our investment valuation uh junio is uh, is a kids focused digital uh, you know prepaid card and this is a company that just raised money at uh, 10x our uh, investment uh, uh, valuation uh drifel is a gaming marketplace a very interesting company uh, it is like steam which is a global uh, platform uh, for uh, for buying uh, gaming uh, merchandise or gaming uh, products like uh, you know in game items uh uh so drifel has launched it in india and indian players now for the first time can pay for it in indian rupees and not in us dollars creditas is a company that is you know uh, one of the world's best technology for uh, early warning system for lending institutions and it has kotak bank and hdfc bank as its customer right now minvax is a company that is founded by iisc bangalore professor team and you know they got money from axel ventures at 5x our investment valuation and they are developing you know uh, a vaccine for influenza and covid-19 uh fresher again uh, a b2b uh, supply chain management company for uh, fresh and meat products 
the net card is uh, probably you know as big as the keto now in terms of donations to charities online very successful company crypto is a networking platform company for crypto users kava space tech again a recent investment kava has basically uh, productized uh, the satellite feeds that are available uh, and 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 uh, making it easier for its sme and corporate customers to utilize uh, the data that comes out of the product so the, these are only 10 companies the idea was to show uh, that our focus is on investing in companies that are using technology uh to create better processes disrupt industries and and benefit their clients uh yoda dates ai already covered it takes into account 17 variables to predict the probability of success of a startup and uh, some of these variables are scalability of the business founders age background what is the potential growth of the business competitive intensity uh the product value customer market fit funding runways uh intensively back tested and this is a proprietary tool that nobody else has uh, you know we have it and we have developed it using our multi decade experience and as the tool analyzes more deals it keeps becoming better uh so in a nutshell what is our investment strategy our investment strategy is to uh invest in companies startups that have exponential business model compared to what we call linear business model exponential business models are where the companies uh, uh, break the relationship between capital input and growth output so companies that can continue to grow rapidly without requiring too much of capital so these are largely companies that are using technology to support their growth rather than you know physical products and that is why our preference is to invest in those businesses that do not require constant capital to grow so tech becomes core driver of business uh we are very very founder centric so uh, so so our experience is that good founders are able to pivot uh, their business models uh, as they learn from the market so that is why rather than having sticking to a particular business model at this early stage it is very important to back founders who are intelligent and flexible enough to under learn from the market and change their product offering so so our our lot of diligence goes into uh, into the founders themselves uh uh we uh and then there is another very important thing that i must highlight that uh, that our strategy here is not to be the lead investor we want to co invest with other lead investors and that is quite important for us that uh, the the lead investors who come in uh we uh, respect them and then we we are confident enough that they will be able to work closely with the founders and uh, Uh, uh and provide uh, you know whatever support and guidance that is required uh and then what we want to do is to be able to stay invested in these companies for as long as we can rather than exiting too early because a lot of times what happens is that when the companies are doing well uh uh the the managers to book profit early exit early and then these companies go on to become 100 baggers 200 baggers so uh, what we want to do is to be able to stay invested in the successful startups and support them and not worry about the startups that are not able to scale up uh, and as i said earlier uh, you know we want to diversify our uh, high uh, you know our portfolio to take care of high mortality so uh, we have uh, uh, we are a sebi registered category 1 aif uh and there is a special carve out for angel fund in that so that is why uh uh the uh the minimum uh, requirement 
in this fund from investors is 25 lakhs and not 1 crore because sebi has given that special allowance for angel fund that uh, investors can commit to invest 25 lakhs uh, in an angel fund uh piper sarika and uh, so me and my uh, it's a 100 crore fund that we are capping and out of which 5 crore is committed by the sponsor which is piper sarika and uh, its directors and their family uh the key terms for investors 25 lakhs to be invested over 3 to 5 years and what we are planning to do is to do three drawdowns uh, 40% will be immediately on signing the contribution agreement 40% after one year and 20% after 18 months uh the fees uh, is you know uh, already detailed in our private placement memorandum also uh there is a fixed fee of 2% per annum and then initial set of fees of 1% and a performance uh, carried interest whenever there is a profitable exit uh onboarding is something that we can get into detailing uh, reporting to investors there will be an annual statement of account annual valuation audited report and update on regular update on investi companies uh there is an angel fund investor criteria so while sebi has relaxed the uh, minimum amount limit but it is important to note that Uh, an individual investor has to have net tangible asset of at least two crore rupees, excluding the value of principal residence, uh, and should have either of you know early stage investment experience or being an you know entrepreneur or a senior management professional, uh, or a, a body corporate. If it is a company, it should have a net worth of at least ten crore rupees. uh these are our service partners our trustee is beacon trustee uh, custodian is edelweiss fund accountant is kratos bank is indus and bank uh and as part of just like our pms here also we have adopted some of the best practices uh so all our employees directors and the sponsor itself will make all their startup investments now through the fund uh, not outside the fund uh and secondly as i said the minimum commitment from the sponsor employees family are 5 to 5 crores which is almost 5% of the total fund and management fees is their only source of income for sponsor so there is no conflict of interest this is the management team uh, and it is doing further we have uh, me and then rajni agarwal uh, ajay modi who is our vice president he is also on the call we have chirag goradia uh also on the call here today and then in addition we have uh, you know a research team we have relationship managers investor relations so we are fully set up now to take contributions and start deploying the money uh and these are the people who can be contacted so uh i would like to end my presentation here and hand over uh to uma and you know uh, for further q and a thanks uh, thanks uh... Abhay, <clears throat> for taking us through the presentation, actually, um, yeah, there are a couple of questions uh, uh, which are uh, already they sent to our email ID. So I have, we have just built a sequence of the question, and uh, um, I will ask now. There are also a couple of questions come in the chat box and Q and A box. I will ask when when it comes to the view actually. So the first question is um, basically, what is the correlation between uh, public markets versus angel investing valuations? Abhi, uh, you are on yeah, mute. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a. I, I think it's Uma. It's a very very interesting question because I think uh, uh, while we are all familiar with public market valuations and public market methodology of valuing a public market company through a DCF and through uh, comparative valuations, uh, P multiples and P to growth and uh, various other ways, uh, there uh, in angel investing we do not have so many data points. and that is why you cannot apply the traditional valuation matrix to a startup uh, that you can apply to a large listed company uh, the problem being that there is limited there is there is sometimes absolutely no history of past performance and all you can go by all you have is 
uh, a business plan and that business plan translating into a financial plan so uh, in that case what one needs to do is to be able to uh, bring all experience to the table to value these uh, startups and uh, uh, many a time it becomes more of an art than science again because the data points are limited so what we try to do is we try to do a mix of uh, you know comparative valuation uh, we look at what is the five year uh, cash flow plan business plan what is the terminal growth rate to some get some kind of discounted valuation uh, we look at uh, uh, you know basically look at what is the expected high growth and how does that justify uh, the valuation that the company wants us to pay so there are so it is it is something that is you know arrived at after looking at different models to say that look are we seeing too much of divergence or at some point of time the average number is coming out to be largely similar uh, but i would say that you know at angel investing stage it is more like you know what is the quality of founders what is the quality how big is the market space uh, how strong is the product how much of uh what is the customer adoption you know do you have paying customers large enterprise customers with deep pockets uh how much of capital you need to continue to raise uh, all lot of these things go into coming up with the valuation so uh, uh our focus is because we are an angel investing fund is to not look at companies that are raising money at more than 100 crore valuation on an average because uh beyond that uh you know uh, it is better that the vc investors come in uh so that is that is uh, that is how we look at uh, public market valuations versus uh, angel fund investing valuation but the point is that if you can get a uh, uh, a company at even 100 crore valuation you get in and it's a very good company it turns out to be an ipo candidate 6 7 8 years later then you can make easily 20 to 30 times your money from your initial valuation date okay okay the next question is uh, how should an hna investor allocate funds to a startup fund as part of his overall equity portfolio yeah so uh, uh, as i mentioned or indicated in my presentation also uh, uh, the startups while higher return over a long period of time longer period of time uh do have this illiquidity attached to them so for an hni it is very important to make sure that they are not over investing in startup because if they need the money or if they decide to change the asset allocation plan then that is the part that they will not be able to change easily because it is illiquid uh and as a fund our effort will be to return the capital back at least to investors as soon as we can but still uh, uh depending on their portfolio size i would say that somewhere around 10 to 15% of the equity portfolio can be allocated to uh, startup or an angel fund okay um also uh, would like to know what are the critical success factors for a startup investing yeah i i uh, covered that in my presentation and i would again repeat that's a good question because people should lot of lot of our investors also ask us that look if you are investing in startups what should we look for you know what is what are the key success factors so i think the most important thing is the founder and the quality of founder the background of the founder uh, and and we invest only when there is a founding team you know so it is better to have a team of founders rather than one founder is very important to have the equity split uh, largely uh, you know uh, equally between the founders it is very important to make sure that uh, one of the founders at least is technically competent because if you are investing in companies that are using technology then it's important that there is a cto who is a founder himself or herself uh, then we look at you know how big is the target market i mean it has to be a very very large market so that it allows the company uh to grow rapidly uh and then uh 
uh, we look at who are the other co-investors with us. What is the quality of the lead investor? Who is the person who is going to mentor the founders? Who is going to spend time with the founders? Uh, and what is the competitive intensity within the industry? Because if it is an industry which already has lot of lot of existing players, then that is a no-no for us because you know it is very difficult for a startup with limited uh, you know capital to compete with large companies that are well-funded. Uh, so the competitive intensity in the industry. Then how good are the technical skills? How good is the product? Uh, what is the customer's view? Not what the founders tell us, but what is the customer telling us that are they going to invest or or buy more of the product? Uh, that becomes very important. And lastly, I would say you have to estimate the probability of next round. That is very critical because high mortality rate in startup funding comes because the because the uh, uh, startups are not able to raise the next round of funding. So that is where it is very important to make sure that the startup has the ability to raise the next round of funding and is working towards it all the time. Uh, uh, and that is why it becomes more important that the founder should be well uh, present in the ecosystem of angel in the, or of you know funding uh, and should have enough relationships with large investors or at least the lead investor has the ability to fund the next round of funding. So I think these are some of the critical factors that one needs to look at uh, while investing in startups. Okay, okay. I mean, this question is again on the process. So probably I think uh, even in case if you have discussed through the PPT, uh, I think it makes uh, sense for uh, the audience also to know it from you again. So uh, Mr. Jay Prakash Manohar <laughs> is asking which are all the parameters that the Yoda or the AI considered for evaluating the startup ideas what's the success ratio and he wants you to share some real-time ideas turn out by the by this tool if possible yeah so uh, i will ask my colleague ajay modi to uh, cover that part i think that's a very good question i will leave it to ajay to uh, talk about that because he is the one who successfully uh, you know what was basically Yoda.ai was a methodology that we were using on paper, but he's the one who got it folded and you know converted into an AI ML based product. So I would I would ask Ajay to answer that question. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Abhay. Uh, so couple of key metrics that the uh, tool looks at. Uh, I will start from the bottom. Is what is the probability of getting the company funded in the next round? Uh, so one of the critical failure parameters in in the startups is that they are not able to scale to a level that they get funded for follow on rounds. Uh, that is why uh, to uh, this this metric of uh, being able to fund a follow on rounds is divided into two parts. Who's the lead investor? As in, what is the quality of the lead investor? Uh, whether it's an international VC, whether it's a domestic VC, or whether it's a syndicate of HNIs. Typically, the last one has the least probability of helping uh, fund the follow-on rounds. Second, uh, what is the runway of the funding? Uh, so these are two very critical parameters. Now, uh, around the business, what is the scalability of the business, whether it is a linear scale business, whether it's an exponential scale business, uh, what is the founder's age and background? So uh, typically, we have seen that younger founders are able to scale business faster because they have high energy, uh, they have high uh, spirits and uh, they are completely on the ground compared to people who come with deeper experiences. Uh, they have some uh, walls in their mind that they are not able to break. Uh, apart from this, what is the growth of the business like? What is the competition? Is there a, a already established benchmarking company that we can uh, look at whether internationally or whether in the domestic ecosystem? Uh, whether the product, whether the company has a product and customer market fit. Uh, so these are some of the parameters in totality. There are about 17 parameters uh, which are further subdivided. Uh, so you can assume that uh, total parameters plus of parameters are about 30. Uh, and when we look at uh, analyzing a company on this tool, uh, what we want as a minimum uh, number is 70% probability of success. So only if the probability of success is more than 70%, uh, we will look at uh, the company seriously, as in we will go to the next step of evaluating the deal. Okay. 
<clears throat> thanks, thanks again. I, mean, I hope uh, this answered the question. Um, and um, next question is, um, what is the mortality rate of the universe? What is the average time taken for from early funding stage to growth stage? Yeah, uh, so mortality rate is quite high. Uh, I think in US, we have seen it is well over 50%. Uh, uh, 50 to 60% would be uh, a pretty normal mortality rate in angel investing. And I think uh, any investor who is able to reduce that mortality rate through uh, better forecasting tools and better decision making systems will do very well. Uh, uh, and the second question, uh, uh, Uma, sorry, I missed that. Uh, uh, going to go from uh, angel to growth stage. So typically, when we invest uh, at, as angels, we have seen that companies are able to raise the next round of funding or growth, uh, or from a VC investor, larger investor, uh, in somewhere around two years' time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, the follow-up question is that how strong is the research? An investment process to reduce the high mortality rate, which is the biggest risk. Yeah, so that is that is the whole point that you know we have we are using our experience now to reduce the risk of mortality. We cannot take it away completely uh, because uh, because it will be that's the nature of startup investing that a lot of companies will will not find product market fit or run out of money. I mean uh, that is that is the nature, but through our objective decision-making tool that is yuda.ai, I think we have a very powerful advantage. And through our, and what it does is it takes away all human bias that comes in in decision-making, you know? So we are not, uh, so two things we are going to do. One is to use our own screening tool, yuda.ai, to decide which investments to focus on. And then also then co-invest with other investors, you know, because that is also a very important thing that, uh, at this stage, more minds are better than one mind. You know? So if you are working with other like-minded investors, uh, the probability of success is typically higher. So these are the two things that we are uh, focusing on to reduce the mortality rate. Okay. Uh, there are many questions coming uh, on the lock-in period and on the tax angle. Probably, Ajay, in case, uh, I mean, you yeah. want to take it, that's your choice. So the question comes on, um, what is the lock-in period and when can investor get this whole amount along with returns? And uh, there's a, so I can come another question of Naresh Chand Bansa, which also asks, as per the guidelines, AAFs have to pay TDS on assumed earning, even though there is no distribution of income. So you can combine these two questions and probably answer. Uh, so on the second one, whether there is a TDS or not, uh... So for category one angel fund, it's a pass through. So there is no TDS, at least for an individual investor. Uh, now, whether for a non-individual, which means a company, uh, there is a TDS or not, that also depends on the company. I mean, uh, it's not just we that who will take that call. Uh, uh, coming to the first part, what is the uh, lock-in? What is the expected return? What is the timeline? Uh, so conceptually, there is no lock-in, but since this is an illiquid, investment an investor cannot redeem whenever he or she wants uh, so it will uh, the return will only come as and when there is a exit uh, from a portfolio company now uh, what we as a fund target to do is to start returning the capital in the starting the fifth year of investment so which means from about 20, year 2027 uh, we start to return the capital uh, the life of the fund is 10 years with a green shoe option of expanding it up with by two years uh, with a majority. Uh, minimum investment in the fund is 25 lakh rupees. Uh, that is drawn down over three tranches. So 40% drawdown is on sign up. Uh, the next 40% is uh, about 10 to 12 months from the first drawdown. And the third uh, installment of 20% is about six to eight months from the second drawdown. So over a two and a half to three year period is when we expect to draw down this uh, commitment. Okay. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, Jay, there's been a lot of question on the on the ticket size and the staggered way of investing. Hope oh, this would have answered them. Um, the next question is that um, uh, most of the established startups which went and did IPOs are burning cash. Do you identify companies with path to profitability? 
I think that is very very important to us. We are I think since we are uh, public market investors also, we have this huge preference for companies that have profitable unit level metrics. So whenever we look at a startup, we make sure that at the unit level it should be profitable. So if you are a you know health tech company or you're a fintech company or 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 you know uh, any area that you're covering health tech your unit level should be profitable because if unit level itself is not profitable then there is a serious problem you know then we will not be frankly interested and then the bet is that at unit level profitability you should be able to grow to a level that the revenue start covering your overheads also and and your development costs and then you become profitable so this approach automatically builds a very strong focus on path to profitability so we are we refrain from investing in companies that are going to continuously spend money to build uh, a market for themselves but do not know or are not sure when will they turn profitable and it is not only in startup space i would say even in listed space you know there are enough companies that have got listed recently and and still uh, are not able to articulate that what will change in their business model or at what what time will they expect to get profitable so we stay away from these companies i mean uh, for us the universe and opportunities are good enough that we can focus on companies that are uh unit level profitable and and uh, you know focus on only them okay uh the next question um, is what is the industry practice on spreading of investments as more the spread lesser the return opportunity uh yeah so i think there is there is an optimal number that comes in and we have seen through data and research that has been conducted into in us largely because us has been uh, far ahead of any other country in terms of startup investing uh, and as a very vibrant startup investing culture so there are a lot of studies that have been done in the us and that shows that three things are important one uh, the fund should be able to hold its investment for as long as possible because longer you hold the better are your returns secondly uh, diversification so that the fund can focus on companies that are working and not worry about the companies that are not working uh, these are the two most important things and the third thing is that the the the, the fund should have the ability to uh, if required participate in the next round of funding of successful companies so there should be some capital available so these three things we have learned from from the you know research studies that have been conducted that that you know 30 to 40 companies in the portfolio for an angel fund of the kind that we are doing is an optimal level of diversification okay uh, so fine we have almost come to the conclusion uh, so we have two questions um, uh, abai uh, so uh, i'll just take one among them if time permits i will uh, post the other one also uh, so how do you assess the uniqueness of a startup how do you assess the promoter pedigree is it a stage wise funding you do or one time so our preference is sorry yeah. and just a follow up question uh, and what is the maximum minimum exposure you take in a single company and yeah. the way you, you monitor that yeah so yeah. Uh, uh so the way uh, uh what we look at is as i said the promoters the founders ability and their desire and you know their uh, their technical skills their sales skills technical skills and sales skills are something that we assess a lot you know because uh, uh, it is easy to assess you know uh, to see how they pitch to their customers to see what kind of product they have developed and what kind of unique product insights they bring and then we look at also that what are their core skills you know which uh what is their what is their uh, background that is driving them what is their basic motivation and not only the of one founder but of the entire founding team because we like to invest in companies that have preferably three founders uh, if not two 
so how does the founding team work together what is their interpersonal relationship between themselves who takes care of which role uh, what are their internal dynamics what is their ability to hire a team what is their ability to retain a team you know compensate a team uh because these companies cannot succeed only with founders they need very strong teams you know so what is their ability to attract talent from the industry and typically we have seen that good founders that have very strong uh technical skills uh core skills are able to attract good talent because good talent wants to work with people who they are inspired by so uh so these founders need to be inspirational to the people that they are trying to hire you know just for the kind of work they are doing and and there is enough you know you know you look at people like steve jobs or elon musk or or in india you know there are enough examples you know even dhirubhai ambani or the kind of people who who have uh, you know created uh, you know huge wealth for their investors you know it should be like the founders should be able to attract the talent that that these guys were able to do so i think that that checking that part of the founders ticking each box is very important for us uh in terms of per company uh, exposure we are uh, uh, our average ticket size uh, are uh, would be around 2 to 2 and a half crores as a first investment in the company and uh, as i said it's a 100 crore fund so uh, we would uh, range is 1 to 4 crores so we would end up making about 40 30 to 40 investments uh, i don't think from this fund we will be making follow on investments because we would like to make our first investment and typically we will own uh, somewhere between 2 to 5% of the company's equity in in that range because of the market cap that we are playing in and in terms of uh, manage mo- monitoring our investment again it's a process that we put up in every company that we engage with the founders informally regularly and more formally through uh, a quarterly report that we get and we also share with our investors so that is the way we engage with the with the founders and you know uh, talk to them thanks thanks for uh, you know the series of questions been flowing so anyway we have no time to answer all uh, so uh, participants uh, i we will take all the questions uh, you know from the chat box and we will Uh, get it. Uh, get the answer from uh, uh, five or seven of the team, and we will uh, we'll reply back to you as well. Um, so, um, uh, Abhi, you want to just quote uh, any final comments? Uh, we have almost come to the end. Yeah. So, I I I would like to thank PMS Bazaar team, Oma, you, and Pallav, and everybody for organizing this. I think it's quite remarkable what you guys are doing at PMS Bazaar. That you are looking at uh, you know uh, catering to. all the uh, investment needs of an investor not limiting to public markets only so thank you very much for you know taking that initiative uh, it's absolutely fantastic and i would like to thank the uh, participants for showing the enthusiasm and and, and joining and learning about uh, uh, you know uh, angel investing lastly i would like to say that look uh, angel investing look at it as a journey you know don't look at it as a destination you know you will engage with these companies you will enjoy talking to founders when you invest in the fund year or so later you would see your portfolio companies covered in the press and you will feel happy that you know you were you are a shareholder uh, of that company so i think the i think i think uh, i think the advantages of startup investing are are many and uh, do not let the uh, initial uncertainty deter you uh, but you should as an hni investor definitely create space in your portfolio for startups So uh, just to add uh, what Habai said, uh, um, and as a in, an investor, we get access to all the you know large cap, mid cap, and even the small cap, the small cap names, in from the market, from newspapers, from all the you know um, medias. So with regard to the angel fund, uh, you know companies, we as an investor, we don't get access so easily. You know, I think uh, investors now should uh, look uh, this as a good opportunity. You know, of investing and participating in the you know the, in the rally of uh, these angel fund companies. Um, uh, also, that you know, uh, for this particular category, one AIF, uh, the minimum investment is twenty five lakhs, and that is also going to be taken in a staggered manner in in three tranches. Uh, am I right, Abhay? Yes, that's right. Absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. So that makes our uh, job very easy. I think so. Oh, for on our overall portfolio, twenty five lakhs um, um, amount is. Uh, is not is not going to be a commendable part, but at the same time you can get exposed to angel fund investing 
in the beginning and you can get uh, and you can increase it over a period of time uh, when you get the uh, more comfortable there are more newer and newer opportunities which are going to come in the angel fund space in fact uh, one of the data said that uh, way back in 2020 there were only 240 plus deals happened in the angel fund space and 2021 it all the way galloped up to 450 490 I, i'm sure even at 2022 also i think it would be a a much more promising year you know for the angel fund issues so uh, it keeps coming so um, uh, I, I i request you all to take a, you know a, a participation in this uh, product uh, actually so um and uh, i thank you all i thank uh, the team uh, abhay ajay and your entire team for uh, having uh, present here and uh, having for having given a wonderful presentation uh, take through for all our uh, you know clients uh, with us. I thank uh, all the participants who have logged in today and taken a uh, special time to uh, devote uh, to listen to this wonderful uh, session. Uh, we look forward to uh, with some more sessions in the future. Uh, for now, I just remember my uh, signing you off. Uh, see you all. Thanks. Thanks again.